Hello everyone, uh, winter rolled back into town, so I have an excuse to wear my hat. So what I'm doing is, obviously if you've read the title, I'm gonna carve some wood. It's gonna kind of show you the idea of why I carve wood the way I do, uh, and those type of things. Uh, my inspiration came from rack and confrontation years ago. I uh, played confrontation a little bit, not enough, Dogs of War, I think it was. Uh, not enough to say I was an expert. I really liked the game though. But one of the things they really had that I just was in awe over was their backdrop for their studio pictures. The, the creativity, the level of detail, especially in the wood carving, really intrigued me. So I wanted to start doing that myself. So that's where I got the inspiration from for wood carving. And that's uh, kind of what I'm going to show you today. And I carve, when I carve something, I'm trying to be creative, but I'm also carving it within, with the future knowledge that I'm going to be the one painting it. So I, I do it a particular way. And I try to do it in an easy way to uh, forge my painting style. So you may determine that you have a different painting style, that you want to carve wood a particular way. Uh, if you come up with a really cool way to do it, let me know. Let me know. I, I, I really would uh, like to grow, grow in this as well. Uh, but before we get started, the taco of the day goes to Johnny Silver. Taco of the day. Goes to Johnny Silver. I noticed the other day on a, uh, I think it was the Trainiacs uh, Facebook group. Uh, first person outside of family and friends that actually uh, um, recommended one of our videos. Someone had mentioned, I wish I could paint, I think it was the wood this way. And Johnny Silver said, uh, go watch his videos and you can. I thought that's pretty cool. Uh, I don't know the guy. Uh, I don't know this person, so I thought that was pretty cool. So if you are a friend of Johnny Silver or you play D&D &D with them or you are you sit across the table ready to crush him in a tabletop game, buy Johnny a taco. Give that man a taco. So uh, he'll have a taco. It might be the best taco he's ever had. So give him that taco. Anyway, uh, I'd like to get rolling with this and uh, show you how to, my, method of, my, my methodology of of carving wood. Let's get going. I use basswood because it's harder than uh, balsa wood. Is. It doesn't it doesn't have the properties that I like for this type of work. So what I'm going to do is just trim this end off because I cut it and snapped it. But I'm just going to do a a pattern. This is to give the initial shape, and I would probably draw in thumbnails and and different things like that just to get what you want I'm trying to get out get my big old hand in for the camera now when I'm cutting this way I won't go very far because I don't want the whole thing to split and then run down the middle so what I want to do is I want to come back on this side to prevent that from happening and make a notch and just kind of slowly work it down and not put a lot of pressure because I don't want it to split this way either. And as I get closer, you can start to see it start to give over here a little bit. Just kind of come back like this and kind of rock it back and forth. And that way you can do that and prevent your wood from splitting. Don't quite have the all the way down that I want. And I want it to be a little sharp. I want it to be a distinct edge so I want it to be in the middle uh, I like things like that because it just allows for when I go back to paint it allows me to have an edge or something to highlight or a crevice or just more character character to what I'm doing and then I want a I didn't draw a notch but I want to uh, we'll draw it first here so I want this to come up I'm just gonna do a uh, Rackham did this a lot this pattern a lot of people have done this pattern 
just a simple pattern but it looks cool I like it and I want to kind of have this in this line right here so I'm going to trim that line a little bit more so they kind of almost run in parallel uniformity not a ton but good enough so now what I'm going to do is I want this to be exaggerated a little bit and kind of uh, stand out more so I'm going to notch this out and again I want to kind of follow that line a little bit so it's a, in parallel a little bit and do the same thing over here now because of the camera angle I'm trying to show it to you more than me so I hope I'm getting close if not Concepts there. That's what really matters. Eh, not bad. Got lucky. So what I do when I carve the wood is I am thinking ahead of time that I'm going to have this piece like this. It's going to be looking down. And so I want to have a crisp edge on the top that I can highlight and paint. Most of the time. Now, granted, there's times I change and I, and I vary and everybody does. That's fine. So I'm just going to cut a line straight down. And also, this makes it easy to carve as well because I don't have to really overcomplicate what I'm doing. I'm going to move the light a little bit. See if that helps. Sorry for the bad lighting beforehand, but I'm, it is what it is, I guess. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come on the inside and I'm just going to kind of V it a little bit. And that chunk comes out. Now, you may see that it narrows here, which is fine, but I want it a tad deeper so it shows a little bit more when I go to paint it. The idea when you're doing, at least my philosophy when I do fantasy, a real carpenter or a dwarf in our fictional uh, environments would be highly skilled and these things would look immaculate. I like to exaggerate things and have things a little flawed just because I think it's cool. Like when I did the mine on the row houses, for example, uh, the mine's kind of ski wampus if that's a word. It's not the best ever, but uh, I think it gives more character to the piece and that's okay with me. Now what I wanna do is I'm just gonna kind of round the edges so they're not so crisp. Kind of, just, It gives more character when you go to paint it and that's what I want. I want those edges and I want those, that feel of when I go to paint this. Of just kind of, randomness gives me more character so it's just not a, a straight off the off the press or in this case out of the sawmill piece of wood now for the video i'm not going to go along and do the other side i do the same side thing on this side but for this i'm just trying to teach the concepts so i'm going to show you one side so now what we're going to do is we're going to go and uh, add the grain to it with a wire brush, but I want to kind of give the illusion there's a knot right here. So come, the grain's gonna come down like that and kind of give the illusion there's a knot. So I want to train my wire brush and have it do what I want it to do. So I'm gonna give it some guidelines. This is a dental tool I actually got from my dentist. Uh, he did autoclave them for me, so they're not overly disgusting with everybody else's germs. So I'm just going to kind of give a guideline to my wire brush, and hopefully, to some degree, my wire brush listens to my guidelines and follows them. Yeah. This just kind of gives a little bit more character to my wood. 
So it's just not random lines that you would see when you're doing a normal wire brush. And you also want to wire brush the top. I don't want to overly do this. I kind of did a little bit. I might go back and clean that up a little bit if I was going to paint it, uh, which I might end up keeping this anyway. I also will sometimes want to to exaggerate the end too. So I'll just target the end with the wire brush to give it more character. I'll do the same up here. Now there are times I'll use balsa wood and you can do the same technique, but you just don't want to press really hard with the wire brush. I use balsa wood in areas where it's strategic on my piece because we play miniature games, right? I play miniature games. I have to think about durability. I have to think about big old, uh, uh, ginormous, clumsy hands potentially breaking my turning pieces. It's not so much at home because they're my clumsy hands, but that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, comments, leave them below and I uh, hope you learned something. enjoyed the video it was a short sweet to the point video and just to show my philosophy and my ideas and why I carve wood the way I do and uh, how it fits my painting style because I want to be able to have sharp edges I want to be able to highlight and to have that crisp edge that I showed you in the video allows me to highlight that and make it stand out more to where that at a distance at arm's length or on a tabletop you can see it easier and that's the kind of the point of it uh, but if you have any questions, comments, or if there's anything you'd like to see that uh, is it may be in, on one of the train pieces that you see that you want to know how we do it, let me let us know, and uh, we'll do our best to produce that video to where we show how we do things. And uh, ciao! Make sure you like, comment, subscribe on YouTube. <laughs> if you want to support us, you can support us at PayPal.me slash Scotsman or Patreon. Um, comment below if you have any suggestions you want to see as far as tutorials are concerned, let us know. And I hope you enjoy this and come back and have a good time. As always, links are in the description below. That was wrong <laughs> to you. <laughs>